Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. It's The Secret Show and it's episode number 198. I'm Patricia Steer and that guy moving around all crazy is Mark Sargent. Hey, Mark. I'm coming to you live, Patricia. You are? Yes, this is not a pre-record. But I do hear, I do see, excuse me, a little bit of a mistiness. Is it that your Skype is still on? Oh, crap. Is it happening like right now? Yeah, but it could be me, it could be you. Sometimes I say there's an issue with the way things look and then later there's no issue at all. Could be my uh, eyes. I could pop out and jump back in real quick if you want. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. But as long as Skype's off, everything's off, we're good, we're good. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm trying something new. I have on my screen like 99% of everyone who makes videos live does, the chat. Usually I have it on my phone and I, you know how you start doing something that is comfortable for you and then you don't want to get out of your comfort zone? Well, that's what it is with me. Having it on the screen isn't in my comfort zone. So we'll see if it works for, or, or, or not. I've always wanted to have it on my phone because I was afraid when switching back and forth, I'd turn the hangout off. So that's what's going to happen. Got it. Uh, we have interesting things to talk about involving Kyrie Irving back in the news, targeted individuals, this Richie from Boston video that I was just listening to when I was uh, getting ready to come on the show. We're going to talk about the incredible t-shirts that we're wearing, the mm -hmm. upcoming uh, conference in Raleigh, North Carolina, the billboard that's already up in Raleigh. We're going to go to the live chat. We're going to talk about videos. We're going to, uh, we're going to sing a little song and dance a little jig. Well, maybe not. But something like that. And I, I just want to say hello to everybody in the chat and we'll go say hi to everyone in a bit. Share it on social media if you've got social media. Uh, and um, give it a thumbs up if you like it. Let's talk shirts first because shirts. Um, they're very positive and wonderful. Uh, we have a guy whose name is Gerald and he goes by the name of Jerry. And he owns a company called um, Flat Earth Outfitters. Flat and Earth Outfitters. That's it. Ask for it by name. <laughs> so... Uh, he sent us both little notes and t-shirts that we're wearing right now. And he didn't request that we wear them or anything or even talk about them, but we're going to, because I think it's great. Um, he writes, thanks for the work within the flat earth movement. You're helping to awaken a multitude. Keep it up. My wife, Kim and I hope to be able to meet you both in time until then, keep it flat. Check out our Facebook page when you get the chance and like us at flat earth outfitters. We need all the help we can get. Do you know what I just noticed on, on my card? You know, you got the same card I did? Yes. Get this. I just noticed this now, and I've had this thing for a little while. Yes. Oh, it's inscribed. Yes. Hi, hi Patricia. And look, and look at the one I've got. <laughs> <laughs> I, that reminds me of a story. I've got, to, I've, I've got to tell it real quick, which is uh, when I was in, oh boy, early in high school, like a sophomore in high school, I uh, was dating this girl from Seattle and I also met a girl from California. And, you know, back in then there was no email. So we're writing letters, writing letters and me saving time. I'm writing both of them in the same day. Oh, no. And then <laughs> two weeks later, I get one of the letters returned to me by the girl in uh, um, Seattle it says, I think this was meant for somebody else. And sure enough, I had switched the freaking envelopes and we're... both, both girls gone to the wind. Ooh, not good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you do that sort of thing. I know. Yeah. Lesson learned. Oh, you should have seen me though. When I first got it, I mean, I dropped to my knees, one of those Hollywood. No. <laughs> uh, it's karma right there. It I was. Mean, it was absolutely karma. I shouldn't have done it. And I never made that mistake again. Yes. Well, so Flat Earth Outfitters, we want to show, we want to give them a little promo. Uh, we want to show the shirts. Uh, they offer free shipping and they make really cool shirts. So you go first and show Okay. Them. So my shirt says, oh, let me read it first before I stand up. I'm going to level with you. This is actually more of a Dean Marble shirt. Uh, I'm going to level with you, Earth is flat. And instead of the word level, it has a bubble level. So I'm going to level with you, the Earth is flat. Yeah. Love it, love it. Now I'm going to show mine. All right, so here's my shirt. Flat 10. And then here it says, Earther, and I have it kind of tied up right here. And then the back, you have to see the back. Uh, this is sort of not Go ahead, go ahead. Tell me, I'm just going to walk away and then you tell me. All right, stop. There you go. It has 10 flat earth point facts. 
and I can't read the text. It's way right. too small. I'm a walking billboard for Flat Earth if I put my hair up anyway. But right. the shirts are great. Want to thank Jerry. Want to thank his wife, Kim, and Flat Earth Outfitters. There's a link in the description box. We don't receive any profit from the sale of any of the shirts. They do, and they deserve yeah. it. So if you want to buy yourself a new Flat Earth shirt, that's the place to go. Flat and Earth I also, Outfitters. I also Not like them on Facebook. Not at flying stores near you. <laughs> oh, by All the way, I, you know what your shirt reminds me of? It reminds me of, and you're, again, I know you're not old enough to remember this. Uh, remember all those kids that would come back from Hawaii with like Hawaii 78 and Hawaii 79 because the year mm. they went. Uh, it, it only had that. It had Hawaii up top and then two digits, and it was usually a bright colored shirt. And it looked kind of like a jersey, but it was the year that you went. That was kind of fun. Very cool. But it made you jealous because you're looking going, God darn it, those people kept going to Hawaii. Well, I'm going to keep my note that was for you, Mark, <laughs> and treasure it forever. Uh-huh. Yours, it was for me and treasure it I, The thing is, I didn't even notice it till literally till just now. That's funny. Yeah. All right. So from, uh, from that, let's move on to Kyrie Irving, who's in the news. Um, he seems to always be in the news. And I do want to say that I don't think celebrities are the ticket to getting Flat Earth out there to more people. They're just um, a tool, I guess. But also, they can be controlled. Um, they can be co-opted. Um, they're just, it's just, here's something interesting that happened. That's all I'm saying when we talk about Kyrie Irving or any of these people. By the way, I'm adjusting in my seat here. I'm not wiggling around. I, I, my seat is an office chair with wheels. So if I even so slightly fine. move. Wait, are you on carpet? I'm on hardwood. No, I'm on a uh, plastic thing, which oh, is yeah. on carpet. Well, if I push slightly, I'll... Roll away. Roll away. Uh, so that's why I move in my chair and it kind of looks exaggerated. But uh, yeah, I mean, so Kyrie in the news. Kyrie in the news. Uh, and again, celebrities, they're a double-edged sword when it comes to Flat Earth because they do reach a lot of people. I mean, Kyrie Irving has millions of Twitter followers. He is considered one of the star point guards in the National Basketball Association in the United States. He's already got a championship ring. He's good friends with LeBron James, one of the most recognized athletes ever. And he's got amazing moves. I've watched the guy. He's he's fantastic. He, he's, he can just play ball. And he's, he's young. He's in his mid-20s. So when he was at the Cleveland Cavaliers, when he won his title, as you know, just before he went to the All-Star game, while they were champions, he goes on uh, a little podcast and says that he believes in flat earth. And of course, this is right before media day. And so when he lands, all the media, which, are, you know, media people love athletes, but they hate interviewing them because the athletes are so mechanical most of the time. It's like, oh, it's all about the offense, the defense. It was coaching and we love the fans. We give it 110% and all that other crap. So when a player lands and his opening line is, oh yeah, by the way, I think the earth is flat. Th that statement alone is so interesting. You've got to talk to him. So during the off season, he was traded to Boston you know, on the East Coast. And he's now playing with them. He's already played seven games with them. And just recently, he was interviewed by a University of Connecticut women's basketball coach. She has her own little podcast, and she decided to interview him. And he opened up to her about the flat earth. It wasn't the standard. Again, if it was USA Today or CNN, he probably wouldn't have done this. But she disarmed him, and he's like, all right, let's talk about it. So... There's an art, and it's all over the place. It's on ESPN, it's on Sports Illustrated, all the mass national networks are covering it. And there's a great thing on CBS Sports here. I would like to read if you don't. Ooh, Please, that's okay. take okay. the floor. I will. Okay, the article is called, you guys can look this up, it's on cbssports.com. It's called, After Doing Research, Kyrie Irving says, There's not one real picture of Earth. Subtitle is, Irving said that he wasn't trying to discredit science, he just didn't see empirical proof. And it goes a little something like this. Written by Kevin Skiver, or Skiver, S-K-I-V-E-R, only four hours ago. In an enlightening, and you guys, by the way, you can hear the audio version of this uh, various places on YouTube. The audio quality isn't fantastic, so I will do my best to kind of translate. In an enlightening, if not enlightened, interview with UConn women's basketball coach Gino Aruema, 
Ooh, A-U-R-I-E-M-M-A. I do not know how to pronounce that. Kyrie Irving had a lot to say. He talked about flat earth beliefs, Duke University, the seeming inevitability of his trade to Boston, and the movie Whiplash starring Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons. During the interview, Irving recanted his previous claims that he was trolling the media with his flat earth statements. A little. For a refresher, here's what he said at the end of September. You know, this is only a couple months ago. Look, look, here it is. All I want to do is be able to have that open conversation. It was all an exploitation tactic. It literally spun the world, your guy's world. It spun it into a frenzy and proved exactly what I thought it would do in terms of how all this works. It created a division or literally stand up there and let all these people throw tomatoes at me or have somebody think I'm somehow a different intellectual person because I believe the earth is flat and you think the world is round. It created exactly that. And then the, the author says, presumably all of this was explained at a Dr. Evil style desk while lowering reporters into a pit of sharks. But I digress. Irving now says it's just his inquisitive nature to question the spherical shape of the earth. Kyrie says the whole intent behind it, coach, it wasn't to bash science. It wasn't to like have the intent of starting a rage and be seen as this insane individual. That's when I start going slightly a little, a little. When I started seeing comments and things about universal truths that I had known, like I had questions. When I started actually doing research on my own and figured out that there is no real picture of Earth, not one real picture of Earth, he said it twice, and we haven't been back to the moon since 1961 or 69, it becomes like conspiracy too. I know he was wrong with 61, but it doesn't really matter. 69 would be fine. Okay. So this can go either way. Maybe Irving just wants to ask questions that people aren't asking. After all, saying that something becomes like a conspiracy isn't outright calling it a conspiracy, and everyone wants to be a little contrarian when things are universally accepted. No great discovery was ever made without going against the grain. The separation, and Kyrie says, the separation that I can't stand is because I think one particular way, and then there's a high rate of comments of who I am character-wise. The only intent was for people to open up and do their own research. Ah, I wonder where you got that line. It wasn't too, okay, let me figure out and go against science. Let me go against what I've been told is right and all this stuff. The only intent was just to wake up and do your own research. I really should send him a Christmas card. Instead of just assuming something, this is the first time I've read this, by the way, something that's been told to you because I've been told a lot in terms of my history and facts and particular facts, and it's been completely false. I just want to open up and have that conversation. I wanted to just ask other individuals, like, what do you really think this actually happened? I just want to know because I don't know either. And the author says, for someone who doesn't know, he seems pretty sure that we don't have real pictures of the Earth. However, in the interview, perhaps our most startling revelation came to light. Irving really didn't understand whiplash at all. Irving has said in the past that the movie inspired him, but he elaborated why, and he talks about whiplash for a while. And that was basically... The, the writer of that article, and I know he's not a flat earther and he's right. aware of all the ins and outs, but... Um, I mean, he's not that bright. I think well, some of the things he, that were said were. He, he, let me let me end the article like this. It's one one paragraph. Irving likes to give these interviews, and he enjoys making people talk about these things. He has his own firm set of beliefs. The Celtics, the Boston Celtics, are currently five and two, tops in the Atlantic Division and the Eastern Conference, tied with the surprising Orlando Magic. As long as he keeps playing well, people will embrace his weirdness. And who knows? Maybe one day he'll watch the end of Whiplash. The part where the writer said that, I'm just going to paraphrase, that Kyrie's pretty sure there's no real pictures of Earth uh, from right. space. Well, why didn't the writer go look and find out that they're, you know, Media images? can be lazy from time no, to time. No, it's ridiculous. If you're a reporter, what do you do? Report? Oh, no, you just parrot. Oh, thank you. Case closed. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But again, I, I like the fact that, I mean, perfect timing. Kyrie's back in it now. And, and all the other all the other articles said the same thing. He's doubling down. He's doubling down that that he's back in. And why not? It's perfect because now he was a flat earther in Cleveland. He he hedged a little bit just as he entered Boston. And once everyone was comfortable with him, he shook enough hands and made friends with everybody. It's like, yep, yeah, I'm a flat earther here, too. And like, you know, and, and it's true the the honestly, the comment at the end, Americans love winners. And if he if he if he keeps these guys winning, 
they're not going to care. They're going to be like, yeah, whatever. And there'll be more people looking into it. Now, so, if he starts tanking, that's a whole other thing. I but, know it'll look, it'll make flat earth look bad. He's a, he's a horrible player and he's a flat earther. <laughs> well, he, he's the, it's the type of player that's really, it's going to be tough to turn him bad. I mean, you could have him have a, a bad shooting streak, I suppose, but other than that, he, he keeps out of jail or any other yeah, problem. No, he's a, he's a real straight shooter. No I play know. on words there. I mean, he's squeaky clean. So I'm, I'm happy that the article came out and just before the conference, great, wonderful going into it and it'll, you know, boost the headlines and more people will look at it. Well, I'm going to go into the live chat and say hello to a few people. Ginger Sugarbush is here at the start of the show. He said, it's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> King TL is here, uh, says to you, Mark Sargent, it's game time. Uh, Twitwit <laughs> is asking, this is right when the show starts, that I wonder what the topic is tonight. Maybe witches and ghosts and other spooky things on the plane. Well, you know, I thought about making this a Halloween, uh, you know, costume show. It's the day after Halloween. We did that in 2015. Uh, you dressed up as martial law. Uh, right. Complete with a shield and a whole military outfit. Right. And I dressed up like as, as a, uh, I don't know what it was, um, some creature from Star Trek. Oh, right, right, right. We're, well, you know, we're kind of dressed up today. We did wear yeah. matching shirts from the same, and so we were dressed up as flat earthers. We're... <laughs> and we are flat earthers. We are flat earthers. Kind of works both ways. But, but I, I mean, like convention, convention flat earthers will be wearing this. Yes, exactly. This, this so what we are are convention flat earthers. We're right. dressing up as the soon-to-be people who will be at the Flat Earth Conference. Greetings. <laughs> Tinfoil hat, please. I know. Uh, Ida Martin Leadkey and Nathan Oakley and Andreas Design and uh, Rob Morrill. And we also have, let me, I'm scrolling on my computer like a real person as opposed to on my phone. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> Rock Lover is here as well, who's a huge Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes lover. That guy just can't get enough of this show. Writes me lots of weird love letters too. It's, it's kind of weird, but anyway, you know, thanks. Uh, really <laughs> skeptic too, says, hello, flat friends. And uh, Twitwit mentions targeted individuals, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, Richie from Boston Video that uh, came out today that was kind of crazy. Uh, Angel Raven 444 is here too. And uh, we've got somebody named No Way Jose, who says redheads are his favorite. Cool, cool. Uh, Sherry Davis is saying, I look different today, but beautiful. Well, that's nice. Thank you. Uh, I think it's because I have super dark lipstick on. Um, that's it. Yeah. Uh, the Trainman is here. Hey, Trainman. And let's see what's going on. We've got Mark Ofsky. Hey, uh, geocentric Ginger B. Flats, uh, who, uh, who, who is also Ginger Sugarbush. So he had to come in on another account or something. Tau Seda Alpha is here, who says, I didn't know Mark was such a ladies' man. Um, not sure what that refers wait, wait, to. Wait, what's that in reference to? <laughs> I don't know. Other than maybe you received a letter written to Patricia. So maybe that could be it. <laughs> I don't know. Why am I a ladies' man? Somebody specify. I'm looking at the chat, too. Uh, Steve Anthony is here too. The real Ron Swanson and Five Arts Liberalis is here. And I want to thank Five Arts Liberalis. Uh, that's five, then A R T E S, and then same word L I B E R A L I S. So it's the number five and then A R T E S L I B E R A L I S run together. Uh, the reason I want to thank him, aside from being really a nice person, uh, he created the thumbnail that's. Uh, if you check the video out later, you'll see it. He, he drew that or created the art. And a link to his channel is in the description box. And once again, Five Arts, thank you so much. So nice. Uh, Suzette Ann is in the chat as well. Daniel Reza, too. And scrolling down. Uh, mm -hmm, I'm covering, going over people that already said hello. The original Gem Panda is here as well. Charm Fear uh, saying hello. And I'm scrolling past people who've already been greeted. Uh, Knowledge Scavenger, Paula is here too. And hi, Fruity You, Flat Earth Crush, hello. Um, don't want to miss anybody. I John Watson too, Mikey is here. I get it, I here. get it. The, the two letters to two girls, the two yeah. girls that I lost because of the two letters, that's oh, why I'm a ladies man. yes, yes, yes. Right. Well, You've had a bunch of different girlfriends from what I've heard. Yeah, I have. They've yeah. been very nice. Well, although I still haven't, you know, 
Well, you don't ever want to get married, so it doesn't matter if you're going to meet the right one. I know it's not it's not necessarily that as much as remember the life's little instructions, which says mm -hmm. marry only for true love. Right. So I'm a hopeless romantic. That's really what it is. And I am too, actually. Are you? Yeah, I would say I want true love. I would love that. I would love to meet somebody, but I have <laughs> specifics that I want in the person, and one of them is that they're open to all of the things that we are who are watching this are open to. And that just narrows down the populace quite a bit. And being 54, 55 in February, it can't be somebody who's 18. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, I mean, it could be if you wanted to. No, you know, do not, I mean, no. <laughs> Demi Moore type of thing. That, that'll always end bad. Um, oh. Somebody might, a guy who's my, a man, excuse me, who's my age range and uh, into the things that I'm into. Um, not all of them, because it's okay to have differences. Anyway, whatever. This isn't a dating show. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Call 1-800. Exactly. D-A-T-E-P-L-S. Well, there is, a flat earth, there is a flat earth dating site out there. Yes, isn't there it, is. Mm -hmm. Like flat earth love or something like uh, that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so. so, yeah. I don't know how that's working for people, but uh, I think it's a great idea. And I want to say hi to Chris Topher. Uh, I am going to be mentioning Chris in a little bit something that he wrote me or a piece of something that he wrote me that will be a good springboard from some future conversation for some future conversation uh we've got dell in here who uh not dell of the beyond the imaginary curve another dell who's also a huge huge uh watcher of flat earth and other hoppa days always making comments always writing me personal letters with all sorts of i don't know hugs and kisses xoxo <sighs> okay i mean i've told him no just like that uh rock lover guy but they just keep coming um what else uh arwin hey arwin how are you doing and uh maggie m hello um who else is in here a bunch of other people Cy warrior hello and charlie in our live chat mike live one two eight five osher oh six Puncture Ball is here. First time I've seen Puncture Ball. Hello, D Marble. How are you doing? And Charlie is here. La Osa as well. The doll is real. You are a fantasy. Whoever that is, got their message deleted. So I'm sure it was pretty annoying and dumb. abrasive. <laughs> Very possible. Very few people get get blocked in here. Um, mm -hmm. We've got Laurel Austin as well. And uh, Flat Earth Court. Hello, Isa. And um, Twitwit is saying, yes, yes, the letters to the two girls. Uh, Dame Ethel tripped with me and Liga Alexis sending much love. Um, I'm scrolling S-S-E-L-M-A-N, which is nameless, backwards. Hello to you as well. And um, I don't want to leave anybody out. And I will go back into the chat and say hi to everyone as well. And we've got Alec Hollenhurst too and Effie Witch Bella. So hello, everyone. Okay, so what should we focus on next? Uh, the CBS affiliate video. Yeah, you do that, and I'm going to find that Chris Topher message. I'm not going to read the whole email he wrote me, but there's a portion of it that will be good food for thought. So, so if you guys get a chance, this was sent to me. You know, most of the stuff that I put up there in terms of mirrors are little news clips, and there was a CBS affiliate out of Illinois that ran uh, apparently a spontaneous flat Earth story. Which was fascinating. We we weren't tied to it in any way. The the main flat Earth community they seem to run it on their own, and they said that the flat Earth groups are out there rising, and they don't know why. So they talked to some scientists. They're trying to figure it out, and they went to the local University of Illinois and interviewed an ast uh, astrophysicist, and he of course assured people that the Earth was spher spherical. And it was interesting. It was like a five minute thing. It's like okay, why was this piece run? It, it was great timing. So I mirrored it. I put it up there. Uh, would it be nice if people would do response videos, if possible, to it? Can you toggle back and forth with your... Yeah, it's really weird. When you were just speaking to me, it didn't right. show your face. It just showed your uh, icon. But now mm -hmm. I see your face. So, yeah. That's weird. All right. That I don't know what other... But remember, you're hosting, so you may see something slightly different. Yeah, but then you never know. I had to bring it up. It happened to... Just, just ask people. It's like, if I'm talking right now, you're hearing me talk. I uh, see you loud and clear if that oh, okay. makes any sense uh let me get that uh that thing for email that i was talking about so chris Tofer wrote me something about drama going on in flat earth and we had a lovely exchange back and forth um he wrote something pretty interesting let me try to find it here 
course, when you try to find something that you had up earlier, oh, cover for me, will you? I gotta find it. I had it, but then of course <laughs> I cover for you. What am I? Okay, later I will say be something while I find it where I just hit the button <laughs> and because we don't have a screen that says you know uh, technical difficulties, please stand by. One of those okay, things where where a cameraman slipping on a banana peel. It would actually kind of be good if we had a person that we had a teleprompter to help us out and put all right. the emails we're going to read on it. Right. Yeah, but then we'd probably work for ABC, CBS, Fox, um, Sky TV in the UK or something. That's true. And we'd be talking about things that aren't even true. So go ahead and go ahead and read it. I'm gonna be right back. Uh, oh, you're leaving. Oh, great. <laughs> He's leaving, and I can't find the thing that I want to find. Isn't that cool? Um, well, what it was is that Chris and I were talking about things, Chris Topher, and uh, he posed a question about where flat earth should go. Um, I'm back. That was quick. Uh, Chris said, is it either going to be a socialist government slash church solution or a free market slash open democracy slash private enterprise that will provide the answers? So I wonder what our chat thinks. It's either A, a socialist government church solution when flat earth goes mainstream, let's say, or B, a free market open democracy slash private enterprise. I mean, I don't know what the chat thinks. If it, you know, is it, is it going to be a combination of those two things where I guess that'd be C or will it be A or B? What are your thoughts, Mark? <laughs> well, people always say, you know, we're going to get this mainstream, but it, it, no, no, no. I, but what's going to happen when we do? What's going to happen with everything from you know the maintenance of the roads to hospitals um, we, to the fiery end of the world? Anything that the government has their hand in. And I'm not talking about just hospitals here in the U.S. We have private. But what about some places where the medical care is, is not private? I mean, we're talking about the whole plane. I believe the same thing that I believed three months in, which is we up the volume to a point where we hit some sort of critical mass slash 100th monkey effect. And I still do believe in the 100th monkey effect. I don't know why people keep questioning that thing. It makes perfect sense to me. And then the powers that be try to bend it into a certain direction. Or they, again, you can't have it just be released. Just because the mainstream covers it doesn't mean that it's going to be released. You've got, there's got to be something else that goes along with it. Flat Earth is just part of something else. Uh, it is, but it's absolutely ne necessary. So it's the frame, it's the elaborate frame for whatever is going to be on the canvas inside it. Without Flat Earth, you can't move to the next level. Uh, no one's open minded. Remember, Flat Earth is the open, open minded, sorry, the, Wow, what was I going to say? Open-minded test. Yeah, it's the <laughs> ultimate open-minded test. I was shortening ultimate. Ultimate open-minded test that unlocks everything else in your head to where nothing is off limits. And we've seen this, and it has different effects on everyone. Uh, what was that thing I joked about with you the other night? You know, common side effects include anything. An itchy, itchy rash? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Spontaneous decapitation. Spontaneous Death. combustion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Feelings of depression. <laughs> Your entire family not talking to you anymore. Exactly. <laughs> Loss of work. <laughs> Being accused of everything under the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of things that, that could happen. I mean, the, the effects, we've seen it with all sorts of different people. So when it when it comes to this, yeah, everybody's being open minded, and ninety percent of our our community, hence the the story on CBS, is still out there in the closet. They can't tell anybody. So when you know, so when whoever it is rolls out whatever's next, people we may way more receptive to it. Whatever it is, I still think it's going to be a celestial event. I still think it's going to be the the revelation of some society or technology that's bigger than us that's older than us that's more powerful than us and it will not be much of a shock to the system when it happens people will be like nowadays especially with the flat flat earthers won't even blink like oh yeah yeah totally totally on with that so you're saying that they're going to pretend that there is a society much older and I'll pretend pre that's us. just it pretend or not pretend either way the effects the same right, right. uh so yeah we'll we'll of course be looking at going okay you know, we'll be looking for the flaws in the we'll story. We'll be like fake. We'll be auto-hoaxing. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> auto like, yeah, yeah, 
<laughs> those <laughs> images into Photoshop. Spaceship, those little green men. I'm going back inside. Fake. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's remember, because you you have to. There's only so many options. We we painted the story in in our science fiction narrative so many times over the years. You know, where aliens are evil, they're ugly, they're sinister, they're all these or these awful things. What if an alien? We've never done a movie where the aliens showed up and they've been super shiny and wonderful and it's like you know the the door opens and it's unicorns and rainbows and and everyone's just you know they might as well have been straight out of a, a, a toothpaste ad it's like everything's gonna be great <laughs> you know what if we're that here to help and then they really help i mean that never <laughs> that's not a good well, movie plot well actually we're here to help is straight out is, is out of a couple different movies but right. It's it's but they don't help. That's the thing. It's but that's what I what I think you could do with this. I, flat Earth is just yeah. Of course, Flat Earth is real, but it's only part of the uh, a bigger picture. Because you, remember, you, you can't just roll out Flat Earth on it. It's not a standalone. Because if it was a standalone, you're opening yourself up to a whole bunch of problems. One would be the biggest class action lawsuit in the history of us, which would be NASA. You know, and all the subcontractors, it would be awful. It would be, it would be terrible. So you've got to let those guys off the hook somehow. And that's how you would do it. Well, is, people are saying, um, I'm trying to scroll back up in the chat when we phrased uh, the question. Um, a lot of people are saying C, which is a little bit of both of the things that sure. Chris Topher had said. A lot of people are saying it potentially it could be martial law because of all of the things that you're talking about, the class action lawsuits, people demanding this and that. Um, Do you know what would stop martial law now? I mean, yeah, if you would have told me 10, 15 years ago, I would have said, oh yeah, martial In fact, when I wrote the survival guide uh, back in, oh boy, 2000, well, right after Hurricane Katrina, the I, I thought about martial law. But now with social media, I'm thinking less and less of that because remember that that video that uh, Celebrate Truth put out where they were talking about how people are just drones, you know, the cartoon with people walking around their cell phones yes. and they're just locked in at all times. It was really depressing, but it's also very calming, meaning if you push out stuff to the phones in a certain way, you can keep people from grabbing the torches and the pitchforks and going into the streets saying, burn it all. <laughs> You know, you can you can slow that down, and so through social media, you can kind of keep people in a calm. Depending on how you spin it, you know, literally, if if your phone, you know, if everybody's phone, billions of these things, all it says, you know, did the whole hitchhiker hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy, you know, just you know says, don't panic, everything will be fine. You know, who's who's gonna rush to say no, no, grab guns and. Gasoline well, and torches. If, if people have it somehow positioned to them that the flat earth is hiding, and I'm going to use the word God. Some don't want to hear that. They want to hear the creator or they don't want to even hear any of this, but I'll say it. Right. Uh, they're hiding God, uh, which is That's catchy the biggest title. conspiracy. <laughs> exactly. The biggest conspiracy that there is. I mean, people say flat earth is the biggest conspiracy, but they're tied right. together. Or say the creator, something made this. Right. You call it what you want. That's the biggest conspiracy that there is. And it seems to be the, uh, the higher ups, and I'm not talking about presidents or uh, chancellors, or uh, there's a very few uh, number of people who know, and we don't have names for those people. I don't think, that's my theory. Um, uh, calling them the elite is a misnomer because they're not elite. They're, they should be deleted, you know? Delete oh, the elite. yeah, I see what you did there. Yeah. That's so, um, but a lot of people are saying uh, that a combination of the two things that Chris Topher and I were, were talking about. And once again, they are a socialist government church solution or a free market, open democracy, <laughs> private enterprise. Now, the second one sounds great to me, but a lot of those things bring you into the land of uh, sort of a utopia and that always ends up going wrong. So the, the reality of that is let, let's not forget the statistics don't lie, which is eight out of every 10 people in the world belong to one of the major religions. Mm -hmm. And those people, whatever happens are going to sort of like the 1561 Nuremberg event. They didn't even have a science fiction reference. So they made it a biblical reference. They said it must be a sign from God. Yeah. We're in 2017, but if something weird happens up there, it doesn't matter in some ways, it doesn't matter how the news presents it secretly, quietly. Anyone who's religious is going to go, hey, you know what? That could be divine. And they're going to make a lot of their opinions based off of that. 
So that's what you're kind of tr trying to introduce here. I'm not, I'm not trying to say you're trying to introduce God to the population, but whoever it is has a higher chance of having God's phone number. You know what I mean? Yes. Closer, exactly. closer to it. Maybe one step closer, closer than we are. And, and we believe, for, well, some people, most of the people, the masses would believe whatever they said. Wouldn't you? Well, and you wouldn't. But. Well, hiding God, a lot of people don't like that term, but they're hiding the flat stationary earth for a reason. Sure. Why? What's the reason? Because it's flat? Uh, it, okay, because we never went to space? Uh, why uh, space? It's, it, but yeah, a lot of it has to... Beyond oh, that, and it's got to be involving the creation of this place and right. why we're here and what we're supposed to be doing, where we came the, from. Acknowledging, and again, I'm not going to, you know, name God here, but acknowledging a creator of this place completely undermines a scientific institution which has been flourishing for the better part of 500 years. There is no institution out there, I don't care if it's corporate, if it's private, if it's if it's religious, is going to sit there and let it be undermined willingly. They're just not going to do it. They're going to fight it bitterly until until the very end. And that's that's what they've been doing lately. They've been they've been trying to stop this thing. Not very well. This is interesting. Subliminal illness says God is hiding in you. That's pretty hmm. good. I like that. Very interesting. Um, there, the, we've got Psy Warrior saying free energy grid system will decimate public laws. Well, any, okay. I do have an opinion on this. Okay. Any free energy system would destroy our existing economy. Again, for the same reason, the institution is too mm -hmm. far along. Um, heck, there was an X-Files episode 20 years ago. If somebody came up with an engine, and now you guys are probably quote there, hey, that engine exists, an engine that ran on water, a combustion engine, or whatever, so uh, an engine that could fit in your car. That we all know they do exist, and they're you know hidden, uh, but closed you can't, down. You couldn't, you couldn't even if you wanted to, you could not release that because there's too many industries that are dependent on the oil and gas industry. Many so, parts of the Middle East are not going to let that happen. Aber well, Scotland, think of, Houston, Texas, the two oil, big major no, oil you, places, not the, going to let it happen. The same, the same reason the electric car was killed. The petroleum is not done with us. If one, if the gas actually starts running out, then yes, they will try do whatever they can to switch. But they didn't even want corporate. Corporate interests always have sinister sides to them. Uh, no different than the car industry. Uh, when they rolled into the California and they bought up the, because they didn't want people taking public transportation and they ripped up all the trolley lines. All the rockets use uh, petroleum products. Everything oh. uses petroleum. Think, so, think of this. If, if somebody came up with an engine, again, like a unified field engine or a water-based engine that could replace uh, diesel motors, gasoline motors, we're talking cars, we're talking trucks, we're talking boats, we're talking submarines, we're talking planes. Uh, you would the, no the economy couldn't couldn't stand the transition. It would be you couldn't transition fast enough. It would be that there would be too many sectors of unemployed versus unemployed, and it, it'd be it'd be a mess. And they're not going to take that chance. So, sorry, that's what happens so when, when something gets too far ask. along. You can't change it, even if you wanted to, because it's too far along. Okay, well, so the globe's too far gone. With that theory, what are we doing? Let's close our channels right now, all of us, the, because the globe is just like that, just like the, the petroleum industry, too far gone. Right? Well, you're right. You're we right. Have to do something because we know. It, it, you're absolutely right. At the same time, it, that institution it isn't isn't going willingly, but at the same time, it kind of, I believe it has to change at the end. Remember, it wasn't, didn't used to be the globe. It used to be a flat system. And then it became the globe only relatively recently in the big history of things. Well, the whole so. global warming and all of that thing has caused there to be cars that are running on batteries and other things that are closer and closer to the ideal, getting us off in some small way, uh, gasoline and such. So yeah. I, every you you know I've talked about this a bunch of times. Where every civilization, and granted, it's my opinion, but I do believe in it. Every civilization has its run. You know, it's it like anything, like 
like classes in a school, like people on a car in, a, in an amusement park ride. You got your time, and then after however many thousands of years, it's time to to move on and transition. So to what you're saying is we should start packing our suitcases. I don't know if I. Is it going to happen in our lifetime? Boy, I would sure think so at this point. It's not good. What about people who have children? I mean, that's uh, really scary. I mean, it, it, it's sure. Of course, it's scary. You know, and and there's always going to be not to use but the. Our grandparents used to say, "Oh, the world's going to end," and their grandparents, and their grandparents, and their. Most grandparents. of those, though, were were based off of. I, let's let's be honest here. Most of those were based off Book of Revelation, biblical type things, where right. they were. Yeah. This is this is different. recently, you know, nuclear war, you know, those sorts of scares. This is actually going at science and pulling out the old books and and kind of reinventing science in in some ways, like using their tools against them. I mean, all the factoids we know about. I mean, honestly, we know more about science than the average person on the street, and we know mains. We had to we had to relearn mainstream science so we could shoot it down. You could win an argument at a party with people about uh, the theory of evolution and uh, and gravity because most people believe those are facts. Right, you can. And and look, I mean, I I was thinking about all the different little things that I, I mean, we all know, and I'll maybe I'll say this some of these things at the conference. I mean, how many people know? It's like I could quiz anybody. It's like how fast is the Earth spinning? How far is the Moon away? How far is the Sun away? You know, how far? You know, how fast are we going through the galaxy? What's the curvature of the Earth? We can just boom, boom, boom because we repeat it so many times. Even though we don't believe most of these things, we have to know them to not believe them. But back when we were happy living on the ball before we heard about any of this, we didn't know much of that stuff anyway, unless you really, really, really were a hardcore science lover or a scientist. Um, so to fault average people for not knowing these things, I mean, we really can't because we really were them a couple of years ago, for most of us anyway. So... Sorry. Somebody would say, oh, is, is Mark Sargent not in chat? It's like, no, I'm in chat, but I'm when I'm talking to you, I'm actually looking at you. I'm uh, reading my chat off my screen here, so um, it's different than normal. And I kind of like it, actually. So, it, sorry, one, one more thing, and that is that, remember, we are being allowed to do this. This is, we are being basically uh, kind of handed it. You know, we're going unobstructed down the path so far oh yeah a few channels have problems here and there but the search engines still have been helping us uh both in google and in youtube which is actually google so i'm sure they're using some of the same algorithms the media has been helping us for the most part note that we have been absent from mainstream television by that i mean cbs abc nbc cnn fox uh, those have not run mainstream stories but they have on the internet side of things which tends to get more traction than normal television, although normal television is still considered the lowest common denominator. And a lot of people still consider it their version of the gospel. You know, if you don't see it on, you know, if your anchor man on the national news isn't talking about it, then how real could it be? That's true. But yeah. we, but what I'm saying is we're running unopposed so far. Well, the we thing still... is, that's why the alien invasion works so well, because it would be all over the news, all over social media, and it would put a... Uh, it would put what we're doing to a standstill. It would be like the like War of the Worlds, really. Uh, you mean well? You mean like like all I mean, like it, chaos would break out, or it would just be the story, and there would be no other stories. There would be the story, and there would be no other story, that's, and chaos would break out. That's true, but at this at the same time, flat Earth would be a big part of it. Meaning, it, we no, would still how? unless what would we what, how would we ever be able to get the word out we don't know how many people are flat earthers even that are out and proud like everybody in the live chat and watching the show and watching all the other channels we don't really right. have a number we don't know how many closet flat earthers there are although we hear about them all the time millions uh, you millions. Know, say millions I, i'm not going to give it a number i have no idea well but do 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 just basic statistics we, one per like, one percent of the u.s population is three million you know, I know we're be, more than 1%. It would be like, bam, if a fake alien invasion occurred. That's true. We wouldn't, those things would be, you know, like, Earth is flat. Well, I just heard 10,000 people in China just were burnt in their sleep from the aliens. I mean, who's going to care about flat Earth then? It would be everybody that you know, where you work or where you go to church or where you go to school or at your grocery store. That's all they talk about. There would be people just like in the streets 
breaking windows for no apparent reason, the grocery stores would have no food left. Not that food's going to help you against, you know, aliens burning you in your sleep. I just made that up. But, but that's how people act. They act like crazy folks. And I would hope that people wouldn't buy it that aren't flat earthers. We wouldn't. But they would because they've been programmed with years and years and years of the whole alien thing. Um, it, I mean, it, it's going on today. There's shows all over TV. There's, I mean, I remember in it, the 90s, it was really hot. Alien t-shirts, alien bumps. Oh, stuff. it's never been out of it's, style. Yeah. To, to where I have, have said several times that it's possible that the alien shows that we've been running since the 50s, and they had to run them for so many years because now we have a unique situation where everybody from the age nine to 90 has some sort of space reference. Very true. I mean, it's not like, I mean, any, even the oldest people is like, oh yeah, I remember whatever it is, uh, Lost in Space yeah. or My Favorite Martian. I, I or, remember all of them. Yeah. If you go somewhere and start talking about aliens or astronauts, I would say more than half of the people would rather talk about aliens than NASA and astronauts. True. And that's the way they planned it. True. And and the it's it's true. Everyone's got their own favorite. I've got tons of favorite alien shows. They're fantastic. I mean, you want if you want to pull a really interesting con, ooh, here's a spooky one for you. Don't Are say it too loud. They might be listening and then taking notes. What? <laughs> we see it in a year. And as it happens, we'll say, damn you, Mark Sargent. <laughs> no, no. Well, no, no. If I can think of it, uh, others I'm sure can think of it. I'm not the smartest crayon in the pack <laughs> smartest crayon <laughs> whatever anyway <laughs> i'm not the brightest crayon in the drawer the um uh the, no a good con was be you show up with with a big ship a series of ships and then you tell people you still you still go with the globe thing and you say you know what your your planet's in real trouble we can't save it but we can relocate you you put them on ships with no windows, you know, or put them in nice comfy chairs. Here's, oh. here, here, here's a nice little digital display. Watch Shrek again. And then three hours later, you know, rumble, rumble, rumble. And it's the whole Space Cadets uh, British television show where you relocate them to something else and they still think they're on a planet. Why not? And they're somewhere else on the plane in a whole different area. Sure. Sure. Or you could move or them to underground. The oh, yeah. You could move them anywhere you want it. I mean, not... Not to say, and I'm not, I'm not throwing out biblical heresy here, but it always bugged me that the whole Noah's Ark thing was, all right, you get in this thing where sh you have to shut the windows and don't open them for a certain number of days. And it's like slosh, slosh, slosh. Heck, they could have moved that boat anywhere if you believe in the whole boat story. Interesting. But, you know what I mean? You could have moved them literally anywhere. It's like, they, it's like, we're still in the Middle East or yeah, <laughs> you know, pick them up, take them somewhere else. You can move them to a completely different pond. For all they know yeah. same thing here only you could do it with an entire population as a child i would always ponder the noah's ark story um it, when i grew up 60s and, and 70s when you'd go to the pediatrician there would be or the dentist you know for children there would be these books that i don't even know how these offices got them but they were the same in any office you went to they were bible story books they were quite large they were made for children and they would tell the different bible stories with a glossy hard cover i'm sure some people in the chat remember this maybe it's only in america i have no idea but there was the noah's ark story and i'd heard that before you know from church and from my mom um and i would wonder how they got all those animals on there and how the the the, the ones that ate meat didn't kill the ones that were the, the the ones that ate vegetables and how they had enough food on there and what did they do right. with the feces and the urine and right. you know I mean, the smell, <laughs> no fresh air. And it just seemed to me a complete lie. And then I think my mother told me something like, well, it's just a story to get an idea across. And so. I I actually like the, the, the Ark story, but- I like the flood story. I mean, we have lots of eminence. Oh, no, 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 well, yeah. Evidence of flooding um, in various areas throughout the world as knowledge scavenger Paula will attest to who made a comment in the chat. I like I like the Ark story and I like the flood story even more. I just don't think again, I'm not speaking heresy here, not telling tales out of school, hmm. that there was more than one Ark. Because even if you watch the Russell Crowe Jennifer Connolly version, which was just recently, 
Uh, you still got to answer some questions like, well, if only white people were on the boat, uh, what happened to the other races? Because there's a whole bunch of races out there. So is it possible that, yeah, there was there was a Noah's Ark and then there was a whole bunch arc of Arc 1, Arc 2, Arc 3. Uh, well, and that, by the way, Arc 1 through Arc 3, that's taken straight out of uh, 2012. I wonder if, if um, Emmerich did that deliberately in 2012, the movie with John Cusack where they all got into these big arcs after the the big cataclysm and you know we don't know how the movie ended but they ended up landing somewhere in africa africa was the safe continent well mark ofsky in the live chat says that all the stories repeat through different cultures and beliefs which is sure. true so that lens it doesn't prove but it lends some validity to the whole flood story and then there's markers on uh, on 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 mountains and 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 structures that show things and there are things that shouldn't be there so i don't know is saying there's more than one arc uh wrong is that something that somebody who has deep christian beliefs would be angry about i look i'm i'm just trying to be if i'm i'm looking at it from a storytelling example remember i watch a lot of movies i read a lot of plot lines and when I look at stuff, it's like, okay, if I was going to make this a little bit more, uh, not necessarily believable, but remember, because it's all about suspension of disbelief. And we oh, all have done that. We've all gone into movies and- Allegorical. I mean, that was what my mother would have said to me, although in a much easier to understand word for children. Uh, but then other people believe, no, this is actually the word of God. So there was an arc, or is it an allegorical arc? Or an allegorical arc one through 50? Yeah. Anyway, but I recommend I recommend no, no. people watch the uh, the Russell Crowe <laughs> Jennifer Connelly version. Well, Rand, a flat out elected, says the only arc this generation needs to worry about is Jesus Christ. So I understand where he's coming from. I understand. Oh, that's, that's I get it. Way to put it. I get uh, it. Got but remember, super. that's that's Old Testament stuff. You know, Suzette where... Ann says the Holy Bible's true. Look at how the powers that shouldn't be attack the Bible and Christianity. This is true. Um, do the powers that should not be attack other religions as much as they do Christianity? Now, because I live in the United States, and although I've traveled elsewhere, I don't live in those places, do the powers that should not be in other countries attack their religious uh, books uh, of those countries? Uh, not as much, no. No, as a matter of fact, I was, I was about to say, I thought you were referring to like, how does, how does America deal with other religions? And usually it's, well, it's either war or exploitation, take your pick. Right. Uh, but the other, you or know, like blaming it, of blaming them for whatever horrible things happen. I mean, India's books are different. China has a different take on their stuff. Middle East, I think they, they take it way more seriously than a lot of Americans do. Uh, and then was the one Hinduism, Buddhism. Uh, yeah <laughs> so no i don't think i don't think they uh they they attack it as much as ours do hmm. i tend to think christianity is more attacked than other religions but i mean judaism is attacked a lot as well it is those are, those are two that i know about because i live in the united states right. uh and I, I know in the United States, there's people of every religion. I know that. But but, but I yeah. always thought that the the, the five major religions were mm -hmm. still part pieces in the same puzzle, and that they were mm -hmm. separated deliberately to, uh, so that people you know we, there's this big challenge, and that is can we figure out what's going on? Yeah. Before, like a puzzle. before the timer comes up. Like Tower of Babel. Like the Tower Very of Babel. Different. Very different. Uh, um, languages. I mean, sure. these are all we're talking about things in the Bible that I don't know a lot about. And I will definitely say confidently that I don't know a lot about it. I know about as much as the average person does. So just things we're thinking about here. Right. Don't take it personally if any of this. Is no, I, no <laughs> I can't. I can't judge anyway. Chat which is, around the which fireplace. Is, which is why in, in the original clues, I talked about the five major religions. Because when I got into Flat Earth, I realized I can condemn none of them. Not now, can't. Don't have. I don't have the uh, uh, the right to do that anymore because we're all in it together. All all of them are. All the religions are still inside the same structure, and they shouldn't be going to war. But we'll learn. This is interesting from Awakened Mind in the live chat who says the Tower of Babel may be happening now with things like the Mandela effect. If you believe in the Mandela effect, that would be a, 
a way to make everyone their their beliefs or the way they think change and we're essentially then speaking a different language so interesting hmm. and donovan there's a lot of really smart people that are involved in this awakening and i'm so so very lucky to have met most mostly virtually but many in person the the people that that we're all connected with because and these are so much better than the conversations I used to have about where you're getting a manicure and a pedicure and did you get a new dress and let's go out to a hot new restaurant or a movie. And those days are behind me for the most part, although I, you know, I still do some of those things. We all still live somewhat in that world. But my what's important to me changed so much. Uh, you know, I might as well have been put on an arc now and I'm in a whole different place than I was back in 2015. I have you to blame, Mark. Thanks a lot. Well, hey, you know, <laughs> I do try to mess up lives. The No, I just try to give people perspective. That's yeah. all. Look, you, you, it, the best part about perspective is you don't have to do anything. You, sit, you, you can literally be looking at the same thing, but all of a sudden, all the colors change and the shapes change. And by the way, we're going to be meeting, as you know, mm. a little segue there. We are going to be meeting all sorts of fun people in one week's time. I know. One week from tomorrow. In fact, you and I are leaving our homes and going on Tuesday, Tuesday. flying to Raleigh. So then we're yep. going to be going and, you know, hanging out, maybe just a few people, really. And then uh, on Wednesday at two in the afternoon, Raleigh time, which is Eastern time, we're going to be gathering around the billboard that advertises ODD, the D-I-T-R-H and friends put up, anybody who donated, uh, the billboard there in Raleigh. We're all going to hang out there and maybe make signs and bring them and maybe have D-I-T-R-H's drone fly over and get some pictures of everything so everyone can see. I'm so excited. Right. I, I, I don't have the full butterflies yet. I get little waves of them, but uh, it'll be when I start putting stuff in the suitcase that it's going to be real that it's happening. I already have my suitcases already working on stuff. I've got all my flash drives and I still recommend this. But anyone that's going to be speaking or dealing with any media at all, or you think you might be dealing with media, uh, kind of like a, just a little tip, put everything, your best stuff on a little thumbnail drive. And you can get them on Amazon for cheap or just go down to the store and buy, and buy them. You can get a bag of them for practically nothing and put, put your best stuff on them. And then you just hand it to them. That way you don't have to say, Oh yeah, here's the link you need to go to, or try to write this website down. I, I've got a full, I've got like seven gigs of stuff, you know, on these things. And I'm giving out a whole bunch of them and special secret flash drives for a holy, whole different reason. Oh, I'm kind of scared of those. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Um, I do want to say hello to Jamel, and I want to say hello to all people, free people. I'm saying hello to both of you at the same time for a very specific reason. Hello to Gerald. Gerald is uh, the one who gave us these fantastic shirts, and he's in our chat. So hello, Gerald. Hey, 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 hey. Let me show it off again real quick. I'm going to level with you. That sounds like a game show when I do that. Mm -hmm. The earth is flat. Here we go. I'm going to show and them all again. Up. Just very, very quickly, not a full-on fashion show like before. La -da -da. Can you see? Flat 10 jersey. There it is. Flat earther. 10. Yeah. This is a great shirt. Love it. Okay. Um, and, and it's not just because Patricia is a 10, even though uh, technically I think she's a 9.8. <laughs> uh, and that is on the back, there are 10 facts yes. of why the earth is flat. Yes. That's why there's a 10 on the front. However, exactly. you can get away with it. So. I want to say hello to uh, Happy Daisy, who is uh, in our live chat too, and Zulu One. Zulu One and Twitwit are talking about clothing. Twit says she needs a new dress for the holiday upcoming holiday party. Since I was talking about clothes, and Zulu One says I need a new dress too. Twitwit. So Zulu, I've seen you, man. You can't pull off a dress. <laughs> Cannot do it. Not. No, not. <laughs> not going to happen. It's a well, Twitwit's a woman. I think. Well, yeah, Zulu isn't though. Oh, Zulu isn't. I thought you said Twitwit. No, no, Zulu. Zulu cannot pull off rest. No, I'm not, I don't know who Twitwit is. <laughs> not really. I, I want to say hi to Catherine K85, who says, love the shirts. Yeah, I love them. Definitely love them. Yeah, um, cool. Someone here named Crater is asking if Brian Mullen is going to the conference next week. Nope. Um, as is far as we know, I'm going to guess no. Uh, no. 
Uh, yeah. because he's not going to go, and I believe he's got a child that's due any second. Yes, now. yes, he and his wife have so. a child due. Uh, his wife already has a child from a previous relationship, and uh, quite a while ago, he was uh, one of the people that put this thing together with Robbie D of Celebrate Truth. Brian Mullen is who we're speaking of, and somebody who is not a flat earther and is anti flat earth called a uh, licensing board, I think, of engineers and reported him. And then his workplace pretty much said, you know, we don't want you talking about that flat earth stuff. And it was threatening his livelihood, the support that he yeah. provides to his family. Um, and he is not not a flat earther anymore. You forget when when you get a license, he just what? doesn't want he just doesn't want his career ruined because that's crazy. So. When you get licensed for anything, right, whether it be an accountant or an engineer or a scientist, if there's a, if you actually have to get a certificate to practice something, you are under the banner of that institution. And mm -hmm. that institution has the ability to come at you and say, we need you acting in a manner that reflects us right. favorably. Well, so some people would say, oh, he should have stood up to it. Oh, he should have quit. Yeah. Oh, he should have. Now that's easy to say when you don't have a job the, what, the, of the type that Brian has and you don't have the family and all those other things. Um, it also works. You can't judge, you can't say that person should have done X, Y, and Z. I would have. You, you can only say that about what you would have done yourself. That's it also works in our favor though, because uh, I, why pe university people don't go after us. You know, why nobody with a master's degree in a physical science or a PhD, why don't they attack us? And the reason is, is because they have so many years invested in their education. They don't want anything screwing that up. And that means even debating a flat earther. Because remember, if you're debating, debating a flat earther, if you don't win in the first 15 minutes, you've lost. And they, you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be a, 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 even a third year astrophysicist. You don't want to be that guy you know, on the verge of going for your master's or going for your PhD that, that comes in and looks bad. Because if you do, that's it. I mean, they, they pride themselves. It's all about being pub published. It's all about academic recognition. You don't want that black mark. Oh yeah, you're that guy that went on that stupid show and just got annihilated by the flat earther. And remember, a lot of these guys, they can t they can write well, they can form great thesis material, but they you know, we put them on a radio show, you know, they're still nerds deep in their core. Mm. So bring it, nerds. I want you. <laughs> Get in my belly. I want to say hello to Carly Sunshine and Dirges in the Dark. And uh, Candy is here from I Spy NASA Lies. And... Uh, Michael A.G. as well. And I think I'm making sure to mention everyone. Carl Neal is here saying, ah, Patricia, weathered the storm, I see. Good for you. Best of luck with the conference. So for your show, I wanted to give people uh, a quick heads up. So anybody, anybody that's listening to the show now, this is for the conference. You guys are going to get special exclusive information on what I'm going to do when I get up there. And there's not going to be, again, not much nudity. Does it involve a hotel room and two girls? Because if it is, just don't just don't tell me this. <sighs> you do whatever you want on your own time. I was actually so hoping, you do. know, that <laughs> you would either film or be, you know, the key no, grip. thank you. <laughs> All right. So anyway, no, 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 no. I, no, my, my actual my actual speech thingy. Not, not, not the after hours stuff. Uh, God only knows what happens there. By the way, Candy, <laughs> operative word for you, restraining order, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, seriously. It's going to be so fun. And I, and I encourage everybody to watch a video by Paul on the Plane. He put out this great video after talking with Robbie D of Celebrate Truth, but it was Paul's idea, about um, things to bring to the conference. And... It, I thought, I know what to bring to a conference. Oh, it's actually good. It's good. I've been, I used to own a clothing store and I would go to Las Vegas of all places and they would have these twice a year shows called Magic and it would be where you would go and see all the different lines of clothing and then you'd, you know, pick, you'd go to each vendor and pick what you'd want and write it down. But there was all this, you know, gathering together and there wasn't a, a there it wasn't the same sort of thing as Flat Earth because it wasn't, right. it wasn't spiritual and deep and all that. It was just clothing, but yet... People did connect and that sort of thing. And I knew what to bring. So when I when I saw the title of the video, I thought, you know, I know what to bring. 
no big deal. Watched it anyway. And I, there was a couple things that I thought, wow, you know, that's a really good tip. So check it out. Right. Uh, Paul on the Plains latest video, uh, at, at least at the time of the recording of the show, November 1st, 2017, about what to bring to a conference. Right. It, no, it was excellent. Excellent. I, I, being a survivalist, I, I kind of got all that stuff anyway, but yeah. Right. That was good stuff. All right. So at my thing that I'm doing, you know, I'm doing a and a I do not have I'm, I do not have a lot of time to spend with people. So my opening little monologue thingy, which is a combination of things, uh, is only going to last like five to seven minutes. It's going to be fairly short because like, I got I to actually sit down and like start answering questions as fast as I can, because how many questions can you answer in less than 40 minutes? Probably not a lot. So when I get to the part where I actually read the poem, hopefully people are lined up for that. And my lovely assistant, Rick Hummer, hopefully not in drag, will uh, will be have the microphone and, you know, hand it to people. And again, and just to make it interesting, anybody that, that gets in line and asks me a question gets a signed Illuminati New World Order card game. Card. Mm. Card. Just card. So and wait, you're reading a poem. Yeah, I'm gonna read a poem. It's 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 actually related to flat Earth. Believe it or not, I found one. It was tight. So I'm going. I'm doing a quick audio test, unless D Marble screws me up and 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 submarines me on that. Uh, a video test with some slides. That'll be kind of fun. A uh, little history lesson about how science is wrong, and then the last thing, and I and then a poem, and all those things I should be able to do in under seven or eight minutes, depending on how the crowd is, and then. After the poem, I will do Q&A for hopefully 35, 40 minutes, depending on how long Robbie wants to let me go. And then I will end it with a letter that was recently written to me. It's a, It was a really cool uh, letter to end on kind of a high note. So, But you guys can ask me anything you want. So it doesn't matter. If you get in line and you ask me what my favorite ice cream is, you get an Illuminati, Illuminati card. And, and in if we that ask you stuff like... Uh... How long have you been working for Metatron? <laughs> you can ask <laughs> your real name, fact, uh, I've got a, whatever I've that got guy's a, name is. I've got a special sheet. In fact, maybe I'll maybe I'll read that sheet while I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, we, we uh, can get to that next. But um, the um, uh, but yeah, it doesn't matter what you ask me. And and just to be fair, because I know that you know if you have because we have fifty cards, I think there's no way I'm getting through fifty questions. It's not going to happen. So anyone that's still in line when Robbie's saying, okay, that's it. We well, get the, the next group in here. Anybody that's still in line, we're just going to go down and just give you cards until the cards are gone. And then if we run out of cards, whoever the last one is gets the box. I signed the box as well. Hmm. There you go. It, it, it'll be audience participation. You guys can ask whatever you want. Nothing's off limits. Try not to troll me if you can help it. <laughs> not... Trolling, trolling's fun. Trolling, trolling will be a test of your quick wittedness, and I know well, it will be, be a test of quick ready. footedness to the troll. Because if you're trolling inside a flat Earth room, oh, I don't want you don't. Want well, to be... you know, people can feel free to ask contrary questions if they wish, but I think everybody that's actually going to the event wants to be there because they paid the ticket price to be there. Now, from what we've heard, there have been seven people or so that have oh, uh, right. turned their ticket gets back in and said they're not going. Well, no, they haven't turned their tickets in. Oh, uh, but I, I wouldn't turn them in. I mean, contacted you. They have, yeah, well, well, no, said they can't go that. due to there's, whatever. There's been up until now. I've been playing matchmaker. So people says, "Hey, can I get tickets?" And I go, "Yeah, this person has tickets." And I just I just forward the emails to each other, and they the, everything's gone great. There, as of right now, I have five general admission people, five general admission tickets, and two VIPs. So if somebody wants to get in and you don't have tickets, email me and I will shoot you off the info. You should be able to do it pretty quick. And then they just transfer the names over at the uh, conference and you'll be great. So five general mission, two VIP. Hopefully we can get sorted out. If you don't make it, that's great. But if you want in, I can get you there. Uh, msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. So there you go. Um, I'm very excited about this. I'm hoping everything will go super smoothly. Oh, and I've got a special surprise for the award show, but I'm not telling you. Because <laughs> I, no I know you're going to wear a dress that's probably, you know, handmade by Himalayan children over the last <laughs> 20 years and out of a moth that doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> Only and, for the Flotty Awards, which are on the second day, because that's yeah. a black tie event for Mark and I, not for anybody who's in the audience. Um, anyway, the rest of the time I'll be wearing whatever casual clothes like all of us. Yeah, casual I, I clothes. <laughs> well, my version oh, of casual. Oh my God, seriously. Oh. <laughs> that's funny. 
Paul on the plane is here. Paul, we were just talking about you and your great video about what to bring to the conference. Right. Um, do you want to say hello to Sassy? Undeniably. She is undeniably an awesome channel. So go check it out and give that a subscribe if you've not already. That's Sassy Undeniably. Everyone's saying hello to Sassy. There was a couple of good comments in here. Oh, this question. Are there going to be door prizes? Uh, well, we've got Zen Garcia with some books that are going to be, uh, you know, uh, Pick, pick it right. up the hat. And then we have a woman named Simone who sent to me a couple of Amazon gift cards. So we're also, we're, you and I, during the flatties of before or after or something, we're going to be doing the drawing for that. And right. we'll just be drawing numbers and then giving out these prizes. Perhaps there will be other prizes. I don't know, but that's I'm what also, now. I'm also, um, remember all the, the patches that were sent to me oh, by that yes. wonderful woman in England. So I I'm going to, I'm going to be giving for me. <laughs> I'm going to be giving those to what you want some of those? Well, I'll, yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you early anyway. Mm -hmm. The, um, but we're going to put, we'll put those I'll ask Robbie, but I'm sure he'll do it to where the first hundred people that register will get, you know, their choice of, of a flat earth patch, which is kind of fun. Uh, somebody else asked about media kits. I've got my own media kits. I don't know what the conference is doing. My media kits are pretty extensive. So, and it's, it's, it covers a whole bunch of different things in flat earth. It's not just me. Uh, as far as all the media that's going to be there, who do we know so far? Um, Vice Media is going to be there. Howard Stern is sending a team. German Television is going to be there. I believe an NBC affiliate is going to be there. Uh, the, uh, the documentary team that's been following us is going to be there. Uh, honestly, they're going to be fighting over outlets at this point. Another documentary team contacted me about a week ago, and I talked with them on Skype, on camera, and they really wanted to be there as well, but there are no more press passes. <laughs> uh, and so they couldn't do it, and so they're thinking that they'll do it next year. But they were so interested in everything. And they uh, they say they're not flat earthers, but they're not anti-flat earthers. Right. So that's somebody that understands there's some lying going on and they're not really ready to commit yet because they either don't have all the information or they uh they just don't they're, they're afraid and I, I don't know fear is not a bad thing actually because when you get in this as we all know there are some things that you face that may not be that savory you've got to be very very strong as a human right. being because um you'll face some obstacles. And uh, through the time that you, Mark, have been a flat earther, you have been accused of, oh my gosh, everything but the kitchen sink. Um, I made <laughs> a list. As you know, if you listen to my Strange World episode from last night, I made a list and I was waiting, amazing what a week does, uh, waiting for trolls to call so that I could say, look, the because people say, are you know, I, I appreciate, by the way, everyone that emailed me and everybody that called, and left messages like the two people that have already left messages since we started this thing. Why did I give up my phone number? The um, I appreciate all the support from everybody. It's like, hey man, hang in there. You gotta understand that I'm not worried about troll stuff so much because I've gotten it for the last two years and I got it right off the bat. And plus I was expecting it. I was expecting the worst kind of trolls in the beginning. Remember, I was expecting it from university people academics. I was expecting it from guys with their PhDs calling me up and leaving horrible messages saying, you know, using all sorts of flowery language saying, you are some, you know, mouth breathing troglodyte that should be put down, you know, good day, sir, you know, click and that'd be the end of them. Uh, but because of that, I decided to go through all, you know, what it was out there and pick my favorites of what I have been accused of. And so the list, and I will, I will actually have a folded version of this in my pocket in case somebody trolls me at the conference, which I really hope. You just pull, wait, hold, hold that thought, Mr. Troll. Reach into your. I, I will. I absolutely will. I, I've already got. It's like no, no. I got something for this. Uh, and and a, it's it's called. Oh. It's Sorry, a, that was my phone ringing. I always turn my phone off. I think that's the first time that's ever happened. That's okay. She scared me. Continue. So the list is called Mark Sargent was. And it goes a little something like this. It, well, actually, it's I had to, I had to update it. It's now Mark Sargent was or has. So I was a deadbeat dad from Boston with the actual name of Mark Sargent. I was a high-ranking Mason. I ha oh Jesus had in this case. I'm sorry. I had faked an appendix operation for whatever reason. I no idea. Appendix gate. <laughs> appendix gate. I had faked a world pinball championship, although the local papers would 
beg to disagree with you. In fact, they did a follow-up story just a couple months ago. In fact, there's a video out now by Sleeping Warrior. He put it out. And uh, if you've not yet been to that channel, check it out, Sleeping Warrior. And right. he, at the very end of the video, included the picture of your pinball championship yeah. in there. Now, I, I actually understood why some people say, no, no, he was in like 20th place. The next year, I actually entered the tournament. But by that time, I was already hired by the company, and then I had to be pulled from the tournament entirely. In fact, I had to write a formal letter saying that I was no longer going to be entered into this tournament. But some of the old scores were still out there. So I get that. But no, I absolutely won the first year. Anyway, I was a drone sp strike pilot for the United States Air Force. Wait, quit saying it, I was. I mean, because somebody could just clip that out and believe that that's true. Let them. Let him. It's, it doesn't really matter. There's so many. Who accused me of? I was accused. I was accused. All right. I was accused of being a professional psychological operations officer for the CIA. Still am. Mm. By the way, I was. And these three are related to you. I was living in Patricia's apartment with David Weiss. We were all doing doing podcasts from the same place. I was married to Patricia Steer. Patricia Steer and I had a Croatian child 18 years ago, and said child could be possibly a Russian spy, or at least in the academy as we speak. And most recently, I was a I was accused of being a full time NSA data miner, mm -hmm. simultaneously being a Hollywood executive working at Warner Brothers, but currently living in San Diego. And on top of those things, also in the gay mafia. <laughs> and to cap it all off, I am currently a large Jewish woman. All these things I have. So is there, and and they're so they're so far apart from each other. It's like if anyone wants to keep adding to that list, great. I'm I should probably come up with a uh, uh, a year's end sort of you know like a wish list. It's like I wish that somebody would accuse me of being something else. Um, I like, like the last one. Like what? Being a large Jewish woman? Yeah. Because what, what should I aspire to now at this point? <laughs> being a uh, a gay black man living in D Marble's van, where <laughs> where we're life partners. <laughs> no. How's that? About D Marble. Oh, wait, is he listening to this? <laughs> yes, he's. No, you know what I mean, though, right? <laughs> Yeah. It's like these all these things like look and so people were going oh you know mark you gotta remember i have i have seen this stuff for a long long time two years two years and change now so does it bother me no because it's a long you know it's a long list of stuff that doesn't even remotely make sense and so pick one you guys want to believe one go ahead pick one and, and run with it but you're there's a reason why nobody makes videos of these previous things anymore it's like, uh, it didn't go anywhere. Fine. Do you want to dig? Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep digging. Not going to find anything. I've got a whole list too. Do you? Yes. Are you, is Here that why you have me read this list? <laughs> Here are things I've been accused of. Yeah. Being a CIA agent that started on my, right after my first show with Stars Are Souls. And that was kind of something cooked up by, oh, a very infamous vegan within the flat earth movement enough said yep. being canadian intel being right. the wife of a russian spy who was caught on cctv in an airport being a shape-shifting reptilian being transgender being a clone being a satanist being a wiccan having a brother who's transgender having a brother who is wiccan having a brother who's a satanist being a 20 to 30 year old man, which I guess means I'm transgender. Well, not just the transgender, but apparently the founder, fountain of youth. Yeah, exactly. Uh, declawed my cats. I'm a fake vegan and actually eat steaks behind the scenes. I'm bulimic. I'm anorexic. Wear padded pants to make my butt look big, which I have a very small butt. Wear depends undergarments or depend undergarments because I have a urinary problem. I've also been accused of never owning a clothing store, never living in New Orleans, never being in radio. My parents never owned a radio station, never lived in Kalamazoo, Michigan, never graduated from Loy Norris High School in Kalamazoo, Michigan, don't have a sister named Amy 
Elizabeth Anderson, nor a niece named Ashley Nicole Anderson, now Grant. Then I'm married to Mark, as you said. Uh, yeah, married, a, we're married. Yep. Had a Croatian daughter. Yep. Uh, Laura was her name. Well, still is her name, but she had a YouTube channel. I interviewed her and she asked me to take the video down because she was getting hassled because she's a flat earther and I complied. It's the only video that I've taken down completely. Sure. I put it back up. Uh, she is on Facebook still, but she's not doing anything with flat earth. She's not anti-flat earth and she is vegan, but she's not my daughter. She has own life and yeah. I'm proud. Yeah, that's proud. Fine. Um, that I live in the same house. These are things I've been accused of now, in case you're just tuning in. Live in the same house with Mark Sargent and D-I-T-R-H. That I'm a Jesuit. That I'm a member of the Eastern Star. That I'm Catholic. That my parents are still alive. Or more specifically, my father is still alive and was called in by you and I during a show to fix my jukebox. That my jukebox might not be original that my jukebox didn't come from WKMI radio station in Kalamazoo, Michigan. That is a prop. That my cats are props and I actually hate them. <laughs> <laughs> that my mother had three different death dates because my whole life story is fake. Why would and you I hate her cats? It's just things people have said. And the reason that there are three different death dates is within the same week, uh, body found... Uh, decaying in the basement and they had to do an autopsy and then they had to do a blood test and the coroner wasn't sure. And so the reports were given to the authorities and they were printed. And then we finally came up with a date that we were all comfortable with. And it's on the gravestone where my parents are, are buried in, uh, in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And people have also said that, uh, well, because you're Jewish, how could your parents be cremated because Jews aren't cremated? Well, number one, uh, my mother was Jewish and she and my father, my father Presbyterian, uh, my mom converted to Christianity when my sister and brother and I, before we were born, when they got married. So we were baptized Christians, but they decided to be cremated together. Even if it's against the Jewish religion, it's what they wanted. And their ashes were uh, blended together when my mother died in 2014, my dad in 2008. So then the, the urn had both ashes blended and then they were interred in the family plot. Um, anyway, uh, what else? That I'm having an affair with Nathan Oakley and hiding mm. it from his wife, Paula. Um, Ooh, a threesome, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, remember, these are things that people have accused me of, and none of these are true. Right. That I posed in lingerie on Skype for Martin Lead Key. That I showed Adam Joseph Doty my body on a Skype chat by opening my robe. And um, generally just uh, being a psychopath, a bunch of other things. That Your list is actually better than mine. Oh, uh, that, uh, that a large restaurant chain owns where I live. Right. That's one of the more recent ones. Plus Metatron and Metatron scandal. So. Right. It's good. So, yeah. That's what it is about when you're a flat earther. Perhaps the things that you've been accused of, and I speak to whoever is watching, differ from what we've been accused of. Yep. But uh, you get accused of things, even if they're simple things like being nuts, being stupid, not, uh, you know, do you science, bro? I mean, all of these things we face. It's not easy. No one would choose to do this. No. It chose us. No. No. I, again, I... I can only take it so seriously. So when people say, you know, are you this or are you that? It's like, come on, give me, give me something a little better than that. I mean, I've got gay mafia for God's sakes. And that's a real thing, by the way. It's yeah. not, it's people say, <laughs> is that even real? No, it's a real thing, but it's not, it's, it's not like, you know, normal mafia, but with more fashionable clothes. It's just normal mafia that are gay. That's, that's all. Very it's, interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing anyway. about these accusations, the only thing that anybody can ever come up with are mm -hmm. things that kind of might suggest one of these things. Many times it's just saying it out there, which creates people who are very gullible, it, believing it and then spreading it. And then a lot of are, people don't do research. So. These are conspiracy. You know, as far as mudslinging goes, this is the, the conspiracy variety. I mean, this isn't even mainstream, right? When you get into the serious stuff, like from a guy's standpoint, you know how this goes. It's like uh, harassment charges, paternity suits. Yes, exactly. Uh, all sorts of horrible internet things. 
Uh, you know, there's all sorts of, there's a whole laundry list. You want to really smear somebody, you could go after them. Uh, D. Marble says he's been accused of being a vampire. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, you mean like Blackula? <laughs> nice. That's a really cool. So that's considered a cult classic. That is funny. That is funny. <laughs> uh, we had a comment in here from Nathan Oakley. I'm, the chat's moving. I have the chat set on slow mode, but it's mo still moving pretty fast, and I might have I missed want it. to drink your blood. Nathan made some co funny comments. Word. That it was actually his wife and I who were having the affair, not he and I. Carly Sunshine says she's accused of being a Russian porn star. <laughs> nice. Actually, Russian porn stars are, are pretty great nowadays. <sighs> Don't even tell me how you eat. What? I'm just saying. It's <laughs> Eastern Bloc. They caught up with us really quickly. I probably um, shouldn't be saying that on no, the show. The um, um, I want to say hello to Zoe. Be here in love. Uh, Zoe is the one who kind of encouraged me to have my chat on my screen as opposed to on my phone. So Zoe, it is it is you're right. Way better. Way way better. Christian method. D Marvel. You want to try to be Blade? Come on. That's stereotyping. <laughs> Blade. Uh, you know, reading all those accusations about myself and hearing you read the ones about you, it actually puts it all into perspective that it's. It's funny and it shows how how much this flat earth awakening oh my god yes it has affected people well yeah i mean how we're, we're being hypocritical in some ways saying you got to be open minded to everything right <laughs> and then then all of a sudden it's like oh yeah you could be hyperdimensional you know be a <laughs> hyperdimensional vampire right now it's like ah crap i what am I supposed to say? It's like, that's just silly. I, I can never say those words ever. That's just, I can never use the word silly, ridiculous, retarded, stupid. I can't use any of those things to criticize anybody's ideas anymore. So, uh, but the good news is for those out there that are looking into conspiracies, the good news is, you know, if it's real because it really comes down to one thing. You know, if it was one thing that just permeated the entire, you know, for the last couple of years and that's all it was, then yeah, you know, one thing with like little facets, kind of like, uh, well, the perfect example would be, uh, oh, geez, who's the Hollywood producer who just got smacked? Uh, Weinstein. Oh, Weinstein. I think of his name. Well, yes, yes. Harvey yes. Weinstein. So when he got hit, kind of, or, or you want to use the sports version, Tiger Woods, right? When the first cocktail waitress came out, they all came out. Uh, same thing with Harvey Weinstein, you know, it was like just one after another. But the whole the point is, it's just one big theme. We've got a whole we've got basically an entire Hollywood career worth of themes in, in those lists. You know, if where this was a reality show. It would be pretty darn entertaining. It would be. Yeah, it would be because we'd be fighting off all sorts of fun things. Yeah. I mean, we're yeah. fighting on the inside with each other. Yeah. And then we've got the whole outside world who thinks we're nuts. Well, and we're fighting to wake them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the sad part. So no, I'm again. I, I appreciate the letters. Do not worry about me. If people start, you know, whatever the next thing is going to be, whatever. It's I'm not I'm not concerned because I can only tell you who I am. Look, I'm Mark. The, the, I'm not even wearing the shirt. I'm Mark Sargent <laughs> <laughs> from Washington. Went to Colorado. Twenty years. Came There's back. no need to defend yourself. I find no need to defend. You know what I mean, though. It's, yeah, no, it's you're good, not even defending I'm, yourself. It's I'm my guy. You know, I'm I'm an, I'm literally an open book. Would would a guy that's trying to deceive you would he put out his real phone number? And by the way, you can call that phone number right now. It'll ring. In fact, here, here, let's do this. Right, phone number 303-494-6631. First one to call. Well, I'll, I'll flash it on the screen. You ready? <laughs> Let's see if it goes 303-494-6631. The phone will absolutely ring. And my email is msargent23 at comcast.net, which I, I noticed look, that you don't have any call screening at uh, um, Truth Frequency Radio when you did your show no, yesterday. Tuesday, I don't, the 31st. and I really should. Although, and, well, you don't have call screening. It doesn't know how it works there that you don't have that kind of system. Well, if I had so, another guy, I would. Right, when you used to have somebody else you did yeah. a show with, but not now. And do you have anybody try to call in and say anything weird of any sort? Oh, hang on, hang on. Hang Someone's on. calling I'm gonna put, you? I can put it in chat so that I'm going to make it real easy for you guys. Ready? Here we go. Someone, oh, I, I want to see, see who calls. All right. 303-494-6631. Just to make sure you guys Say it calls. again for those who are not watching chat. Well, it's in chat. 303-494-6631. Let's see if somebody calls. There's a reflection of Patricia. Hey, hi. 
<laughs> Somebody in chat, call the number just to prove. Somebody in chat, call the number just to. <laughs> there it goes. It is four oh six. Don't say it because maybe they don't want their name right. Oh, name. sorry. Well, I just flashed it on the screen. <laughs> well, don't look. Anyway. Okay, it's from Glasgow, Mon Glasgow, Montana. Ooh, my eyes. I didn't even know there was a place like that in Montana. Glasgow, what Montana. Place like sorry, that I probably Scotland. flashed it on the screen, but that's okay, guys. Uh, okay, anyway, anyway. there you go. Um. I guess our show's almost over for the, for the day. Oh, we're not doing a show next Wednesday. No secret show because we're no secret going show to tomorrow. Be oh, it's Coma in Washington just called. That's D Marble. I guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> and no, uh, and no TFR on Tuesday for you because you're going to be Tuesday uh, en route to uh, Rally North. Right, right, right. So Strange Worlds not we're, is Strange Worlds going to be a rerun next week, and Secret Show is not going to be a rerun at all. We're just not going to be there. We are going to be live from, although we're not doing anything special from there because there's going to be a million cameras yeah. and we're going to let. We're just going to be hanging out with everyone. We're all yeah. going to be hanging out with each other. And I'm looking forward to it to a degree that hasn't amped up to the nth degree at the moment, but it will soon. And I can feel, I can feel the excitement. Billion. Okay, guys, you can stop calling now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say hi to Rebel Rebel who's in the chat. There's and uh multiple calls see. coming in now that's probably a bad idea this is happening probably a terrible idea a couple of people the, are um, saying i am mark Sargent. <laughs> uh and and yeah and don't forget by the way uh even if you're not going to this there are going to be plenty of people that are going to be streaming and there is an official full-blown camera crew that's going to be streaming in addition to all the other media that's going to be there and you can check that at fe2017team.com and I think those are like static cameras to where they will be. Anyone's in the main room is going to be shooting the entire time. I don't know if they're going to do remote stuff. But oh, we'll... we have um, we have as well a. Uh, no, you don't have to leave messages. Officers. Oh my God, do not have to leave messages. Seriously. <laughs> we oh, have I police really officers too, by the way. Right. That are going law, to law be there. We'll be right. there. Um, I don't know if they're going to be actually, you know, doing the whole badge thing because we don't want to scare people. Well, it's not because we, we, it's just because there's a large group of people in one place. And right. So and it's flat it. earth. Let's, let's face it. Thought it would be I mean, Bill idea. and I could show up and who knows what the sort of trouble that man would get into. Um, okay. So I wanted to touch on something I talked about in the beginning, which was the gang stalking thing. Right. Now, um, what is gang stalking? Is it a bunch of people that are uh, going around and stalking a person in a gang in person? Not really. Um, it is something that's happening mentally. And uh, there's a video that came out from Richie from Boston called Gang Stalking and V2K Testimony by a Private Security Whistleblower. Mm. It's on his channel now, published November 1st, 2017. And I listened to this and thought, wow. Now, I've, all, I've heard about targeted individuals, and I think a lot of people have heard about targeted individuals. And you think, well, maybe that's true, or maybe there are people that are mentally disturbed and they're making it up. Well... This particular video talks about Seattle, Washington, not where you live on the island, but right. Seattle, Washington and parts of it are controlled by, um, I think it's like voice to skull technology, some kind of technology where they can actually, now I'm not saying I believe this, I'm saying this is something talked about in the video, but it could be possible, okay? Depends on your belief system. Right. That they uh, put voices in your head that you think are your own thoughts. Everything about that voice in your head is a 100% appearing that it's come from your own mind to make you do things, to make you think things, to make you very, very depressed, to right. make you get angry, to make you outraged, et cetera. And so they've been doing this in Seattle, supposedly. And uh, I don't know if anybody knows who Wendy Williams is. She's a talk show host, um, a woman who's quite famous for wearing uh, wigs all the time and she always right. has a sort of signature New Yorker accent how you wow. doing yeah. yeah so this woman yesterday or day before was on her show and I don't know if it's recorded live or not she was wearing a Statue of Liberty costume yes it was yesterday and she was uh, you know doing her show talking welcoming everybody and saying what was coming up in the show and she had the the Statue of Liberty and, uh, and the whole outfit on. It was like a low cut green type top. And all of a sudden, in the middle of her conversation, her speech slowed. She stepped backwards and she made a face like, uh, like something was in her head and then dropped to the ground. Now, later it showed her getting back up 
And she said that she overheated in her costume, but her costume was a low cut top and there was no sweat on her brow, on her face, nothing that showed overheating. She always wears wigs. So it's not like having something on her head was making her hot. She could have been it, dehydrated. Yeah, but the way, that's what I thought, dehydrated or didn't eat or something. No, because you do not do this uh, and make a face. That's a horrible looking face. Nobody freeze frame that, please. Uh, you don't, <laughs> you'd have to go look. There's a, there's a channel called Black Child that did a whole rundown on it, but you can find it all over YouTube right now. Um, and that could have been one of two things, three things. One, yeah, maybe she was dehydrated or sick. Number two, completely fake to distract us get us talking about it right now, or some kind of voice to skull technology, uh, MK ultra, uh, you know, event episode. Um, it could be anything, but whatever it was, it was totally weird. Weird. And Liberty falling America falling. That's what a lot of people are reading into it, but check out the video by Richie from Boston and listen to the testimony from a security guard who talks about it being involving homeless people who are targeted individuals. And uh, one of the signs that you're a targeted individual, aside from you thinking you've got psychological problems, is uh, that your teeth fall out. So I'm okay at this point. <laughs> uh, just something to think about. I'm not saying I believe in it. I'm just saying this is something people are talking about right now. All right. All right. And check it out yourself. Cool. Um, a couple of people are making comments that Wendy Williams did not faint. Her eyes didn't even close. You know, I, I saw her drop to the ground in the one thing I saw. So yeah, it, it looked fake too. Uh, I, I have no idea because I have only fainted once. I got out of a hot bathtub uh, and, you know, doing like a mineral soak and got up and walked to the kitchen to get a bottle of water and something about that super hot water and walking caused me to fall on the ground. I passed out for a split second. And that's mm. happened to, I looked it up online, like what just happened? I've never fainted. Tons of people have that happen to them. And it's any age and you can kill yourself if you hit your foot, if you hit your, hit your head. So- Side effects include dying. Exactly, right. <laughs> um, Want to say hi to the Hori Sheet Show says he likes my lipstick color choice. Hey, thank you so much. Hello to Cat's Eyes and- um, oh, John Watson is in here too. Oh, excuse me, not John Watson. Well, he is. Hi, hey, uh, somebody says a clone malfunctioning, broken clone, flat, earth, flat accord of music says. We don't know what it was. Could have been completely fake, but it is something to think about. We hope we've given you some things to think about. We hope we've entertained you because that's pretty much what the show is all about. And as we had said earlier, if you like our flat earth shirts, check the description box and you will see a link that you can go buy your own. And once again, we don't get any profit from that. And the thumbnail uh, that has been created for the show, uh, that is uh, linked in the description box too. Um, right. Five Arts Liberalis. Thank you so much. Anyway, that's it for the show. Next week on Wednesday, no secret. So next week on Tuesday, there will be no TFR uh, Strange World. But we will be seeing you at the convention. Yes. Yes. And give Kyrie Irving some love and uh yeah give each other some love give each other some love and, and hope to see everybody at the convention and you know be safe yes exactly talk to you soon and this concludes this episode of the secret show keep it flat keep it flat i want to drink your blood George